So this is a story from Egypt, and it's one of my favorites. A long time ago, there lived a young boy. And this boy wasn't particularly funny. He wasn't particularly handsome. He wasn't particularly driven. In fact, he wasn't particularly anything. He had classmates that knew exactly what they wanted to do as soon as they left school. They had business sense. They knew what they wanted to run. They knew what they wanted to do with the rest of their life, but he didn't. In fact, all he ever did was take his flute, his most prized possession, and go near the creek, not too far from where he lived, and he would play. He would play what he felt, he would play what he saw, and he played so often that he was pretty good at playing. But no one seemed to appreciate it. In fact, his mother, at some point during the day, would go march right down there and say, you know what, you, all your friends have gone off and they're making themselves marriageable. You don't even have a job. Who's going to want to ever marry you? And to get away from that, he, the second part of his routine is he would get up from the creek and then he would walk into town. And he would play at a different street. He would pick a different street every time he went into town. And he knew the city pretty well because of this. Well, one day he picked a street he had never walked down before. And as he walked down, he came across this huge expanse of this whitewashed wall. It made him curious. It looked like a nice place to stop. So he hopped onto the wall, and he was going to sit there. But first, he couldn't help but glance inside. And it was the most lush garden he had ever seen. And he began to play. He began to play about how that garden made him feel. It was so well tended. And as he played, he noticed that there was a young girl facing away from him. He couldn't even see her face. But she was on the opposite end. He didn't think he could hear her, but... He imagined what she must be like, and she seemed so gentle and kind, and again, he just hang out there, and he played. He liked it so much, in fact, that the next day, after his mother came down and told him that he was so lazy, that one day he's probably going to fall asleep in the creek and roll in and drown, that when he walked in to town, he decided to go to that same place. And he hopped onto the wall again, and he played again. And this time, he played a little bit more about what he had thought about the night before, because he had been dreaming about this garden. And in fact, even though he hadn't met her, he was dreaming about this girl. He used to fantasize that perhaps she could hear him and she could understand what it was that he was expressing through his music. He knew it was silly, but he did it anyway. And sometimes if he worked up enough of a sweat, because sometimes he would get pretty hot, he would walk through the town center on his way back home. And he would hear the news of the day. Sometimes he would hear the merchants talk about all their travels. Or he would hear the women around the fountain talk about, well, gossip. He would hear the news of this and that. And, and again, he always just stood by on the side. Sometimes he would play his music there, but no one ever noticed him. And then he would go home. Well, he kept this routine for quite some time. Until one day, he heard on his way home talk about that white wall and about all these festivities that were going to take place, and it occurred to him, or what he finally realized was that that great expensive wall with this well-tended garden, well, it belonged to a, a king. And that girl was a princess, and he was incredibly torn, because how could this person ever love him? And again, even though he thought it was silly, he always imagined that one day he would cr climb down off of that wall, and she would meet him, and they would fall in love, and... When he learned that she was the princess, he realized that there was just no chance ever. So he went, and as he was, he was making his way out of town, like, why even stay there? And he ran across some of the merchants that would talk about all these faraway places. And finally he asked, they would always talk about this man that lived in the middle of the desert. That was magic. He could do anything. And he asked, well, can they, can they change you? Can they make you into anybody you want to be? And they're like, that's the weirdest thing you could ever ask for. But yeah, they can. You have to walk two days and two nights. <laughs> this is going to be cut short. <laughs> into the middle of the desert. And he did that. He came across this magic man. And he asked him, can you change me? I don't want to be who I am anymore. And this guy said, yes. What do you have to offer me? And the guy, all he had was this flute. And he said, okay, um, I can take that as a payment, but you have to understand that once you change, you can never change back. So he accepts this flute as a payment. 
He says, what do you want? And he's like, okay, I want to be ruthless. I want to, I want to have plans. I want to know what I'm going to do with my life. I want to be fierce. I want to be smart. I want to be, I want to be handsome. I want, he listed this everything. I want you to change my soul. Well, this man agreed to do it. And he was never heard from again. This young boy just disappeared off the face of the earth, as far as anybody could tell. His mother was sure that he had fallen into the creek and died. And wouldn't you know that everybody he thought had never noticed him? Well, they mourned his death. There was this huge funeral, and they would talk about, oh, how great his music had been, how nice he had been, and how he was so sweet, and he was so nice, etc. Then he was gone. Well, years later, that land was ravaged by war. And that king was about to lose not only his palace, but everything he owned. And they were just about to surrender when, in the dark distance, they saw this figure come towards them. It was this man wearing all black. He was handsome. And he had so much charisma that no one even questioned him approaching the king. They just let him walk right up to him. And this guy said, you know what, if you let me take over your troops, I can win back your land and then some. Well, he had nothing to lose. The king allowed him to do it. And wouldn't you know that within a day, it was turned around. He comes home. The king is so pleased. He says, I will give you whatever you want. Come back to my village in a month, and I will give you whatever you want. The prince comes to the village. Everybody's waiting for him. And he says, I don't want anything except for your daughter's hand in marriage. And the daughter says, oh, I will do whatever you ask of me, father. But first, this man has to hear my story. When I was a young girl, I used to sit in my garden and I would hear this young man play for me. And I know it was silly, I'd never met him. But I always used to fantasize that one day he would come down off of that wall and he would meet me and that he would fall in love with me. And one day he stopped coming and I was heartbroken. I went into town dressed as a peasant and I heard all the ladies at the fountain speaking of him and they said that he had died. I went and I mourned, uh, not as myself, because I was the princess, I couldn't, I had to mourn in secret, but I promised myself that I would never love anyone as much as I had loved him. So I'm sorry, I will marry you, but I could never love you as I have loved him. Well, the dark prince, upon hearing this, put his head down and he said, I completely understand. I too have known such a love and I will not make you marry me. And with that, he turned around, walked out of that palace, and he was never heard from again.